I first heard about uh, Wim Hof sometimes around uh, 2000 when I was uh, thumbing through the Guinness Book of Records and I came upon his record of uh, swimming almost 60 meters under the ice. Uh, of course, I was intrigued by that uh, that feat. And then later I remember reading something about him running barefoot over ice and snow for uh, half a marathon, but I really didn't pay much attention uh, to it. At least not until I watched a video about Hoff made by uh, Vice magazine. And then I was blown away. And let me tell you, I don't easily get blown away. The video documented his escapades uh, of his status as the Iceman. That's how he has come to be known. And there was extensive footage of his antics. And you know what? There's a big difference uh, reading about some sort of curiosity and seeing what seems to be the incredible happening right in front of your eyes. I, I, I just couldn't imagine someone climbing up some high peak in Poland, temperatures well below zero, in shorts. Hoff claims that he's able to do these things because he has developed a regimen of, of, of breathing where for 30, for 30 times, you inhale deeply like, and on the 31st time, you hold your breath like that, and then you repeat this two more times. And this, he says, changes the body's chemistry. And you know what? He's got the evidence. Hoff is keen to have scientists explore his uh, remarkable feats, and he has repeatedly consented uh, to be experimented upon. And one day he was injected with a toxin isolated from the E. coli bacterium that normally produces fever, shivers, and a headache. Uh, but he had prepared himself with his breathing techniques, and he experienced none of these symptoms. But even more interesting, his adrenal levels increased, as did his blood levels of the anti-inflammatory cytokine uh, interleukin-10, while his pro-inflammatory mediators like tumor necrosis factor alpha and interleukin-6, interleukin-8, these decreased. Somehow, he was able to influence his autonomic nervous system. Now, the reason that we call it the autonomic nervous system because it's supposed to work automatically, that you cannot influence it. But he was able to do this somehow willfully. Furthermore, he was able to teach this to others so they can also withstand the cold just like him. Uh, it's very hard to explain. He's written books, uh, he's given lectures, he's trained others to train others, and now we have people all over the world jumping into freezing water and apparently enjoying it and feeling invigorated. <clears throat> there are people now who have been convinced to start their day with cold showers, and they're singing the praises of this rather frigid activity. <clears throat> but really the reason I was blown away is that if someone were to ask me if it is possible to spend close to two hours in full contact with ice, with wearing nothing, or climb Kilimanjaro, in 28 hours, in short, I would have said, no, it's not possible. Yet, Hoff has done it. Now, I did watch his TED Talk, and uh, had I not known anything about him before, I, I think I would have poked fun at his rambling nonsense, which indeed sounds an awful like, like pseudoscientific gibberish. And I would have asked my usual question, where is the evidence? Hmm. But here is the kicker. He has the evidence. How can this be? I just don't know. A good reminder that science doesn't always have an answer. So I'm not quite ready to jump into freezing water, but I'm ready to explore this hot topic somewhat further. And that for today is our cup of joe.